Hi. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, how are you? Great, thanks for being with us. Absolutely, looking forward to it. This is a big night. You, you came at the right night. We have a lot <laughs> with us. Look at him, looking handsome. <laughs> So is um I forget who I was talking to a second ago about the um, social media. So the lead with Rotary is the new Instagram. The old one should I just not worry about that one? Or there are two, right? Um, yes. Um, there's an eClub 7710, but you can um, we prefer to connect to the, or to use the lead with Rotary handles for Twitter okay. and Instagram. So that's where we're um, posting that now. So. Um, Yesterday and today, we've been we've posted a couple of times for um, for our membership week and you know Rotary's birthday and trying to do a big campaign. This and it's, so it's the same on Twitter as well. There's a new one. Yeah. Okay. Up oh, there it is. All right. I'm now following all of those, I believe. Okay. Right. <clears throat> Okay. Hello there. How is everyone? So we, just, we need one more picture for the Brady Bunch, don't we? For like, <laughs> <laughs> Can I be Bobby? <laughs> I'm the youngest. I'm the, uh, the brat. <laughs> I'm gonna make a great selfie though. You guys wave. <laughs> you need a filler. Well, let me get all my ducks in a row here. So, um, since it is eight o'clock, I'm wondering if Tiffany, do you feel like you have everything you need, um, and We'll be able to switch over the screen to you. Uh, sure. Is that good? Okay. okay. Well, I'll just go ahead and officially. Go ahead. Sorry, Kevin. She's just going to stay, um, keep her video camera up. She's not going to have like an actual presentation presentation. So can we make her full yeah. screen? Is that possible? I don't even know how to do that. So. <laughs> I, I think it's each individual um, chooses whether they, they are looking at the, um, the webcams or not. And a lot of times, we do if we can, but sometimes bandwidth is low, so that's why they yeah, let you. Welcome to stay up if you want, and that way, you know, we can all just interact. That way, I'll know if you're really laughing or if you're. <laughs> or <laughs> I'm definitely turning off my camera now. <laughs> it's cold here in the mountains, so I'm all bundled up in my scarf and my long sleeves, and it's been cold and rainy here all day, but no snow, so it's good. It is good. Not that there's anything wrong with snow. No. No, we've seen quite enough. I, I've, I'm <laughs> ready for spring now. <laughs> That's great. Well, I'm going to go ahead and, and open up our meeting then. Um, as you all uh, most likely know, my name is Kevin Primus. I am the current year uh, president for the Rotary E-Club of District 7710, and I have the pleasure to serve with some of the finest Rotarians on the face of this earth. Um, we had a great uh, small get-together this past week. Um, that GN may um, touch base on with a, a pseudo pop-up social, but the more I get to know uh, the members of this group, the, the more excited I am about um, not just their their vision and their heart, but uh, the service they've already committed to with their, their lives even before they became Rotarians. So uh, without further ado, I'd just like to welcome everyone, and um, we can just kind of introduce yourself. We'll start with Eve, and if you happen to have your attendees list, and you know you're next, just go ahead next, and if not, I'll try to prompt you. Um, but we'll go straight down that list, Eve Marion. Hi, everyone. I'm Eve Marion. I am in Durham, North Carolina. This is my first year in Rotary, and I am the chair of programs for the E-Club of District 7710. And again, I'm Kevin Primus. I'm also in Durham, North Carolina, and um, just happy to be here. Or not? Uh, I'm Anand. I'm in Chapel Hill. I'm a Fulbright visiting scholar at the Gillings School of Global Public Health. And I have recently joined this club, and it's my pleasure to join all you people. 
and I think that uh, I would be able to do much more work globally uh, with the team. Thank you. Dilshad. Hi everybody, I'm Dilshad and I'm also at the UNC, I'm a research advisor at the UNC School of Public Health and I'm a member of so, the club and I'm a honorary member of also of another Rotary club here in Kerry. Thanks. Ed? Uh, Ed Gomes, I'm in, uh, also in Durham. I work at Duke University as a senior, senior associate dean of technology and arts and sciences. Um, this is my first year as a Rotarian and I am this year's treasurer of the EQA. Fantastic. Jean? Hello, um, this is Deanne. I was in downtown Raleigh earlier today and now I'm in Durham. Um, I am currently the secretary and president elect and looking forward to hearing um, Tiffany's uh, presentation. Leanne, um, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> this is Leanne Brown and um, I'm a C Club member and I'm here in Durham. And I think is that all we're saying? Sure. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel. I'm coming in from downtown Raleigh. Um, I'm a part-time student and dental hygienist and also a first-time Rotarian. And Tiffany, we know we'll introduce you a little bit later. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Um, anyone else on the call that didn't show up on our attendees list may be calling in by phone. Not, then we'll turn it over to uh, Gian for our announcements. Great, thank you, Kevin. So um, <clears throat> I wanted to point out that the next piece film series, the screening is for the price of sex. It's a feature-length documentary about um, young Eastern European women um, who've been drawn into the netherworld of sex trafficking and abuse following the screening of the film. Um, They'll hold a short discussion session with Rotary Peace Fellows, um, Christina. And um, again, this is uh, the third piece film of the series. This will be held on March 10th uh, at 5.30 p.m. on Duke's campus in Stanford, Room 04. It's a great opportunity to interact with other Peace Fellows um, and to learn more about um, these different issues that are affecting um, everyone around the world. A few previous um, service projects that happened recently. Uh, two Sundays ago, there was the Alzheimer's Caregiver Recognition Lunch Luncheon. That was a success. It, it, uh, if you saw the pictures on Facebook, they had a lot of fun, and it looked like the, uh, the caregivers and the participants, um, they won some great prizes. So um, we hope that they enjoy themselves and had a little um, <clears throat> time to, to relax and, and have fun as well during this difficult time of, of caring for their family members with Alzheimer's. And I'm going to pass this over to Kevin, but we finally had um, our Math Counts chapter competition for the Durham Orange County um, middle schoolers, and uh, it was only rescheduled one time. So um, Kevin, do you want to tell us a little bit of how that went last Friday? Sure. Um, we were um, really excited to have uh, Lots of teams from Durham, Orange, Granville, and Person County uh, show up to our competition, which was held at the Staff Development Center on Hillendale Road in Durham. Durham Public Schools has been very, very, very um, accommodating and, and helpful. Because we changed the date, we couldn't have as many Rotarians available, but our, um, our good friend uh, from the downtown club, Michael Tarp, was w willing again this year to be our grading czar, and they did a great job. We had our, our um, state coordinator, David Phipps, who is also a Rotarian, who's been the state coordinator for uh, about 25 years. He came and, and uh, brought his computer and the scoring program, so what took us a couple of days last year, we were doing it all by hand, and we were snowed out a few times. Um, David had all of the uh, scoring done uh, before, he, and he, he left before the kids even left. So it was really exciting to get, uh, to have such an efficient um, service, and the uh, Durham Public Schools uh, volunteer their AIG coordinators and um, it was just really great. The students, uh, we finally had a little bit of parity between Chapel Hill and Durham schools. We're sending one of the Durham public schools along with um, two Chapel Hill schools to the state competition. Uh, unfortunately, no one was surprised uh, that Smith uh, Middle School 
uh, took nine of the top ten spots. Uh, but there was a surprise, and a student from, uh, I think it was McDougal Middle School. Nope, it was Guy B. Phillips who came in first. So one student from Guy B. Phillips won the whole competition, and then the next nine, actually I think the next ten students were all from Smith Middle School. So uh, Dr. Boyd, uh, not Boyd Strain, but Dr. <laughs> Dr. Boyd Blackburn um, has done a fantastic job. They won the state championship last year at Smith Middle School, and they are poised to uh, defend again this year. Uh, and, and that would make it two years in a row that our, um, our district, Durham and Orange Counties, would have the state championship. If we can pray and believe for them, we will be undefeated in the state championship as a, as a, as a uh, chapter. So it was really great. The kids had a great time. Marco's Pizza provided great pizza, and uh, we're all excited. So thank you for your support. And uh, even those that couldn't make it but wanted to, when we changed the date, thank you for volunteering. And we really appreciate your service. Math does count. Great. Thank you, Kevin. <clears throat> um, then one of our next service projects that's coming up is trying to do a fundraiser for um, with World's Greatest Meal. I'll provide more details once that comes up soon. But um, look for that coming up in the next month or two. Uh, in regards to social events, we a few of us were able to get together at MEZ last Friday. Um, there's some great pictures there. We're hoping to get together again in March um, and do a little curling. So if you recall, back in October, we had a speaker from the Triangle Curling Club. Um, if you'd like to get together for a social event, to do that as well. So uh, I'll put together some potential dates and see which ones work best for us. Um, <clears throat> keep an eye out for... Um, any fundraiser details. If you do have fundraiser ideas, please let us know. Um, also, we are looking for um, an advisor for our local Rotaract here in Durham. So if you're interested, um, we have two potential advisors who will be doing it from other Area 7 clubs. So you can help out if it's not something you haven't done before. Um, you can you know, watch and, and learn and also um, help out potential <coughs> Rotaract students. And finally, um, two district events. If you haven't already, definitely sign up for our district conference. I know Eve, Rachelle, and I will be there, and Ed as well. Um, so we'll be there April 29th to May 1st, and it's in Wilmington, and you register on DACTV. So let me know if you have any issues registering on DACTV. And if you can't make it but um, still want to go to a district-level event, we have our spring assembly in Cary on Saturday, May 14th at 9 a.m. Definitely come learn about membership, meet other Rotarians from other clubs, and um, network and, and hear all different ideas that could um, help us in our club as well. And you can register for that on DAC TV as well. <clears throat> and I'm going to pass this back over to Kevin for our induction of our new um, Rotary Club member. So um, it's, it's really exciting to, to be here and to have this moment. Um, I'm also very excited that uh, BC Dash, who was our president-elect of our downtown Durham club, uh, Jean Perry, who was one of our first transfer members, and um, Shanika Johnson, who uh, is our membership chair, that all three um, are able to be with us tonight. They weren't uh, able to be announced earlier, but just want to welcome you for this very important moment. It's, it's great to have this cloud of witnesses for our first new uh, member induction. And so, Thank you very much. Yes, sir. BC, as everyone knows, is very uh, influential and instrumental in launching our club. Fellow Rotarians and friends, it is my privilege and pleasure today to welcome into membership in our club Dr. Anant Kumar, whose name was proposed by Dr. Dilshad Jaff. Anant, we admit you into membership in the Rotary E-Club of District 7710 into the friendship of Rotary throughout the world. It has already been explained to you that the ideal of Rotary is service. Our principal motto is service above self, and the object of this club and all Rotary clubs is to encourage and foster this ideal as a basis of worthy enterprise. You are to share in this effort. You have been approved for membership in this club because we believe you to be a worthy representative of your vocation, interested in the ideals of Rotary, and willing to do your share in translating these ideals into action. We are honored that you have agreed to accept the obligations of membership in this club and to obey this club's constitution and bylaws. 
I would now like to direct your attention to the um, chat, if you are able to see that. There's a link. You, might, you may want to click on that link, everyone. Now I have the pleasure of asking your sponsor to pin the virtual rotary emblem, which we hope you will wear virtually with pride. And your actual pin will be mailed directly to you. Thank you. Welcome it's to the Rotary E-Club of District 7710. Thank you, Kevin. It's my pleasure to join the club. And I have heard a lot about you and uh, uh, BC Das. I never got a chance to meet him. But I have heard a lot about him and his leadership from Dilshad and many others. So it's really a pleasure for me to join. And I hope that we together we can really have to do something not only in US and globally. So I look forward to working with you all and I will try my level best that if we can really some, do something together. Thank you. It's always been a pleasure to be part of this team. Thank you. Fellow Rotarians, I am happy to present to you Rotarian Dr. Anand Kumar, our newest member. Yay. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Not, would you um, please feel free to share just a few words about yourself and, and your background? Uh, uh, currently, I am a Fulbright visiting scholar here at the Gillings School of Global Public Health. And here, my research is on use of technology in promoting community public health. I am focusing more on how we can use technology, particularly social media, mobile, and internet, to empower the communities. So far, our focus has been on improving the service delivery, but we have not made progress, particularly empowering the community, so how they can also contribute through their community public health action. Besides, I'm also teaching here. I'm co-teaching a paper, Public Health, uh, Politics and Policy in Public Health. By training, I'm a psychologist, and I did seven years of psychology, and then I moved to public health. I did seven years of public health, my MPhil and PhD from Center for Social Medicine and Community Health, JNU in India. And currently I am Associate Professor at the Javier Institute of Social Service in Rachi. I am Faculty in Department of Rural Management. And my institute is, it believes in, it's guided by the Jesuit Fathers, so we believe in the putting the last first. So we emphasize a lot in the community action, community development works. And I'm here, and I'm glad that I get an opportunity to work with you all. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Dilshad, thank you for bringing a knot into the e-club and Rotary. Um, please feel free no, to share sure, yeah. about a knot. Definitely. Uh, it's, it's First of all, it's my honor to, to know Anant and work with him recently uh, as he, I mean, he ended up in my office, so we are sharing uh, one office and it was a real ple pleasure and a great experience to know Anand and work with him and uh, I, I really uh, I felt the spirit of I found the spirit of Rotary in Anand because he was always talking about communities uh, rural areas and service more than other th anything else so I, I, I think yeah I, I made it and I was successful to recruit him and to let him join join us and join Rotary and I, I really I I look forward to have a very long-term relationship with Anand, even when he will be going. He will be going back to India, end of May. So uh, I hope that we still keep this relationship, and I look for future collaboration. But I, I'm honored to to have uh, Anand as a friend and as a Rotary uh, member in the same club. And welcome, Anand. Now, it's it's all all because of you that I'm here. Thanks. Thanks for connecting me with uh, such a wonderful people and the team. And I hope I also get a chance to meet each one of you in person also. Particularly, I would like, Kevin, I got an opportunity to meet you. But I heard a lot about uh, from the BC Das. I never met him, but I definitely, given an opportunity, I'd like to meet him also. And all BC? of you. BC, can you share anything? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Mr. Anand Kumar, you say that you are from uh, what part of India you have mentioned from? I'm originally from Bihar. Yes, what, what part of it? It's, it's, a, 
eastern part of India. Central. I know, I know where Bihar. I know where Bihar is. I'm from India myself. Oh, so. oh fine. Oh, in Bihar, my native place is Ara. You know Bhojpur. Ara. Just, yeah. Indeed, indeed. So, so you're not too far from Ranchi. Yes, and I work in Ranchi. Yeah. Indeed, and I have many friends and family. So welcome to the family of Rotary, which is worldwide. It's my pleasure. So. And uh, I don't know what you have heard about me. I, I hope uh, Kevin and the others haven't corrupted your mind. <laughs> but I only believe that if we, each one of us, do one little good thing every day, the world will be a better place. Sure, sir. And, yeah. and uh, with, through the e-club, we can spread our network worldwide. So please, be so kind. You know, we, are, we feel privileged to have you join us. And I hope you introduce us and our e-club to many of your friends. Thank you, sir. And welcome again. Welcome again. Thank you, sir. That's great. I'm going to go ahead and ask if Eve Marion can introduce our wonderful speaker tonight. Certainly. Thank you. It's my great, great pleasure to introduce Tiffany Urban this evening as our speaker. Tiffany is a 1992 graduate of the University of South Carolina School of Journalism and has worked in public relations, radio, television, and fundraising for more than 20 years. She was a freelance host at WLOS TV 13 and WMYA TV 40, including serving as the host of Spotlight Carolina and as a sideline reporter for high school, college, high school and college sports. Outside of her work, Tiffany is known for her dedication to community service and has previously served as a member of the board of directors of the Haven Homeless Shelter the Spartanburg Repertory Company, Team Spartanburg Sports Council, Holly Wild Animal Park, Flat Rock Playhouse, and the Salvation Armory, where she was her, their first female chair, and the Rotary Club of Hendersonville, as well as on the campaign cabinets for United Way of Henderson County. She was active in Rotary District 7670 and served as the executive director of the Miss Hendersonville, Asheville, and Western North Carolina scholarship pageants for many years. And when she was named volunteer of the year for the Miss North Carolina pageant. Tiffany currently serves on the board of directors for the Henderson County Chamber of Commerce, the Spartanburg County Gamecock Club, and the Rotary Club of Hendersonville Four Seasons, and was president in 2013 and 14, through 14. She's also a member, member of the Hendersonville First United Methodist Church. Tiffany has served as honorary chairperson for the Henderson County Relay for Life and event chairperson for numerous fundraising events in Western North Carolina. She can be heard regularly performing the national anthem at sporting events and special ceremonies. Tiffany grew up in Spartanburg, South Carolina and still has many ties to the upstate and can often be seen or heard as MC for special events. She held the title of Miss Boiling Springs, Miss Spartanburg, and Miss Greenville during high school and college, and was a preliminary talent winner and top 10 finalist in the Miss South Carolina pageant. She's also traveled with USC's award-winning show choir, Carolina Alive, during her sophomore year. We're so grateful that Tiffany is with us this evening, and I'm gonna hand it over to her. Thank you, Tiffany, welcome. Thank you, Eve. It's um, This is the first time I've done um, an online keynote speech, so it's a little weird looking at myself. I don't know if there's something else I can do to see all of you, but that I would much rather be looking at all of your faces. So feel free to um, come back online with me if you have a webcam. Uh, thank you, first of all, for letting me speak to you guys tonight. I am um, really excited about that. I, um, I love sharing my Rotary story. Oh, good. There you guys come. Thank you. I love sharing my Rotary story. Um, I, I feel like every time I do it, then perhaps somebody gets something different out of what I have to say. So um, I'll start by telling you that I serve as the district chairman for membership here in my district, which is Western North Carolina, but I travel all over. And I spoke at the International Convention in Sao Paulo last summer. And since then, I was telling Eve, I've been all over the place. Every Everybody has been inviting me to come and speak, and I really do enjoy that. I love sharing my story. I'm going to be in your area in March. I'm going to be in Johnston County, but I've got three or four days scheduled in Raleigh and Durham and Chapel Hill um, in April. So um, if you guys want to come to a, a, an on-site meeting one of those days, my schedule is on my website, and I would love for you to, to come and do a makeup there one day if you can. 
Um, I feel like uh, for people to know where I am today, it's important that you know where I came from. So I'm going to share with you three things that I think have really shaped me into the person that I am today and how that has created the Rotary Geek that I am. And I really do call myself a Rotary Geek, tongue in cheek, but it's probably true. <laughs> um, I love Rotary. I love what it stands for. And I love sharing that message with people. So um, I, I do a lot of social media. So I, I took a selfie with all of you guys on the screen a minute ago. Um, and I see whoever's running your um, Twitter account, my phone was blowing up during your announcement. So you guys are retweeting and sharing. So that's great. I, I always love seeing that. I, um, I, I believe that um, it's important for us to tell our story because I believe that Rotary is probably one of the best kept secrets in the world. And in order for us to grow, we have to be able to share our story. So um, I'll start by telling you uh, the first thing that really influenced me growing up was the fact that my father is a retired Methodist minister. So that makes me what some people affectionately call a PK. I'm a preacher's kid and usually people go oh that explains a lot <laughs> but I I feel like that was a real blessing to me um, growing up it was a lot like being in a fishbowl people were always watching you and, and wanting expecting you to be perfect and of course I wasn't then and I'm not now but um, really watching you and 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 expecting certain things from your actions from your um, your outcomes um, but on the other hand, it was a really great blessing, too, because I had parents that loved me and appreciated me no matter what. Um, I had lots of adopted grandparents in all the churches that I grew up in. Um, we had great Sunday lunches every week at someone's house. And um, I, I really learned a lot of lessons from my father, um, really learning morals and values, and from my mother as well, but really learning those important lessons growing up. I can remember as a child, my brother and sister were 10 and 12 years older than me, and so um, I was I was much younger than them, but I can remember we grew up in a church that had a church league softball and church league basketball. I don't know how many of you had those things, but um, I can remember coming to a softball game one night, and it was late. We got there much later than had expected. And my father walked up to the dugout and said, hey, Dennis, how are we doing? And Dennis said, preacher, we're down 16 to nothing. And my daddy said, oh, my goodness, it's going to be a really long night. And Dennis said, no, it's okay, preacher, don't worry. We hadn't batted yet. And so I, I can remember that being a lesson that my father taught me growing up, that no matter how horrible things might feel right now, it's okay. Hang in there because you just hadn't batted yet. And he would tell me that when I was growing up. And I really feel like that was a blessing to me. And, and part of why I'm the Rotarian that I am is probably because I grew up as a preacher's kid. And the second thing that really influenced me growing up, I was also a pageant girl. Uh, as Eve said, I competed in the Miss America organization. And Again, that's one of those stereotypes that I grew up with, but I feel like it was truly a blessing for me. Um, I've heard all the stereotypes and all the all the funny stories that people tell about pageant girls. You know, I've heard the one about the girl in interview who was asked, "What is your opinion of euthanasia?" And she said, "I believe they should have the same rights as youth in America." You know, I've heard all those jokes, so you can't really hurt my feelings when you start talking about pageant girls. The reality is I gained a lot from that experience as well. I became uh, really involved in community service from an early age. I developed my public speaking skills and my interviewing skills uh, and my talent. Um, piece of trivia here for you. I actually won talent in Miss South Carolina playing dueling banjos on the flute. <laughs> so um, that there's a video on YouTube if you want to see it, but um, it was a great experience for me. I earned a lot of college scholarships to help pay for my college education, and and really uh, became it helped me to become the Rotarian I believe that I am today. Uh, the third thing that really influenced me growing up though was I was a huge sports fan even as a young child and still today, and I can remember watching games with my daddy. I don't, I don't know if I want to go on out on a limb and tell if I'm a Duke or Chapel Hill fan because I don't want to offend anybody on this. I'll just stick with the fact that I'm a Gamecock through and through. I, I went to the University of South Carolina, love my Gamecocks. Um, 
but grew up watching sports with my dad and my uncle Tillman and really as an adult got to be a sideline reporter um, because I had been a broadcasting major and a journalist and uh, that was a really great experience for me getting to meet a lot of people and, and interview coaches and players and uh, former athletes and, and fans. Um, they always wanted me to interview the homecoming queen for some reason but it was a great experience for me. It really was. I um, I actually literally got into the game. If you like to watch funny videos on YouTube, if you just type into the search engine "Tiffany Irvin hit by player," <laughs> you can see a really funny video of me getting run over on the sidelines at one of the games. Um, but I started thinking about um, a year or so ago all of these things that influenced me growing up. And I started thinking, what do they all have in common with the fact that I'm now this Rotary geek? And I know many of you are new to Rotary, so you probably don't even know what you don't know yet, maybe. And that's okay, too. Um, I didn't either in the beginning. But I started thinking, what do Miss America and college football have in common with Rotary? It occurred to me that every fall in about September, about 8 million people tune in on a Saturday or Sunday night, whenever they have it, to watch the Miss America pageant and find out who's going to be in the top ten. And every fall, um, every Monday morning, at least two national football polls tell us who the top ten teams are in the country. Now, it's never South Carolina. We know that. but <laughs> And it's even worse when it's our rival team, Clemson. You can only imagine how much worse that made it this year. Um, but I started thinking, why don't we have a top ten in Rotary, and you know, you could do that any number of ways. You could um, you could do a top ten list of donors, the top ten fundraisers, the top ten service projects. But for these purposes, I'm going to talk about membership because I'm passionate about social media and I'm passionate about membership. So, I believe that what if we had a top ten list of the people who deserve to be in Rotary? So let me explain that because you see I look at Rotary a little bit differently than most people. I don't believe that everybody deserves to be in Rotary. The same as every young man does not deserve a college football scholarship or to win a Heisman or to be drafted and play in the NFL. And the same way every young woman doesn't deserve to be Miss America. You know, they work their entire lives practicing and blood, sweat, tears, um, all of that to get to that position. And I believe that people do the same to deserve to become Rotarians. You know, I have a friend that lived in Florida and she moved here to Hendersonville where I live now. She had been a Rotarian down there and when she moved here, she visited the Noon Club here in town, um, which uh, meets for about an hour and a half at lunch has 150 members um, and then she visited my club which is breakfast and um, has about well right now we're at about 35 and afterwards she said to me I don't want you to be upset with me but I've decided to join the other club instead and I said of course I'm not upset with you what's important to me is that you stay in Rotary I said but do you mind if I ask why she said oh not at all she said um, there's really much more of an opportunity for me to network in that larger club and I said, you're joining the right club. <laughs> because I believe that if you want to network, join the Chamber of Commerce. And if you have a heart for service, you need to be in Rotary. And for too many years now, we've concentrated on classifications in trying to find new Rotarians. Um, the new bank executive moves to town and we want them to be in our club. Or the new preacher moves to town. Or the new hospital CEO comes to town. And that's who we say needs to be in our Rotary Club. Or we don't have an attorney. Or we don't have an insurance salesman. And I believe that it's more important that these people have a heart for service. And I think that that's why we haven't grown past 1.2 million. We're bringing in lots of new folks into Rotary. But we're also losing some, and maybe it's because we haven't been bringing in the right people to start with. And so I believe that if you create a list of the top 10 people that you know, or that your board knows, or in your community, or whatever the case may be, the top 10 people who deserve to be Rotarians, and you approach them, and you tell them, and you invite them, and it's a little bit different for you guys. Um, I usually tell people to invite them not to a meeting, but to breakfast or to lunch. Um, that's not the case necessarily here unless you're going to have them over to your house to have a, a cocktail or something while you're, while you're having your meeting. But 
for a lot of people, myself included, I go to so many meetings throughout the week, the last thing I want to be is invited to another meeting during the week. Um, but for you guys, this is a, you, you have a very unique opportunity to invite them to stay at home and have a meeting, which is even, even nicer, actually. Um, and so I encourage people at their meetings to talk about exactly what you guys did tonight. Um, you talked about your service project and about the, the Peace Center at UNC in Chapel Hill and uh, World's Greatest Meal. Because, you see, I do believe that Rotary is the world's best-kept secret. And I believe that if there were more opportunities to talk about what we do, more people would want to be a part of us. Um, and I'll give you some examples. When I, when I travel around to, to Rotary Clubs, um, I'm not sure, I, I'm pretty sure that your district participates in CART. Are you guys familiar with CART, some of you? Um, CART stands for Coins for Alzheimer's Research Trust, and there are little uh, blue buckets that we put on the middle of tables at our meetings. Um, the CART fund is to help find a cure and to end Alzheimer's, and it's in 13 districts throughout um, mostly the southeast uh, and the eastern seaboard of the United States, um, but it's, it's spreading. Um, to other districts and other clubs. And so what we ask people to do, for those of you who don't know what it is, is to throw your spare change into a cart bucket. Now for e-clubs, you guys could put a spare change cup in your car and every time you get, or on your dresser at home, on your nightstand, and every time you empty your pockets, throw your spare change in there. And that's a way that an e-club could still participate in the cart fund. Um, but at a lot of meetings that I go to, a lot of club meetings, those cart funds are sitting in the center of their tables. And what happens is at the beginning of a meeting, everyone stands up, they pray, they pledge, they sing, they happy dollar, whatever it is they do at the beginning of their meetings. And as they're sitting down, they throw all their spare change into those buckets and someone will shake them and they make lots of noise. And it's really exciting to hear all the money that's going to cart. And I was speaking to a club in my district um, about a year ago now, um, huge room full of people, lots of guests, and uh, as we all sat down, people started shaking those cart buckets, and they had lots of money in it, and it sounded so good, and it's just, my mother has Alzheimer's, and so for me, it's very heartwarming to see that we're, we're working so hard to find this cure. And so, um, but when I got up to speak, I went up to some of the visitors who were in the room. I went up to one of them and I said, hey, David, are you having fun? Are you enjoying this meeting? He said, oh, yeah, this is great. Uh, I really appreciate being invited. I said, can I ask you a question? And he said, absolutely. I said, what was all that money shaking around in that bucket a minute ago? He goes, I have no idea. And it occurred to me that if guests were in that room that night, or that morning, that was a breakfast, excuse me. If they were in that room that morning and they were told that Rotarians were going to find a cure for Alzheimer's, who wouldn't want to be a part of that organization, right? It's like talking about World's Greatest Meal. If you have guests on with you um, in your meeting, you want to explain what a World's Greatest Meal is and that we are this close, but now we're this close to eradicating polio from the face of the planet. Don't you think people would want to be a part of that? That's why I believe that social media is so important. Um, I share a lot. For uh, I hope you guys will find me. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm on Snapchat. I'm on um, Meerkat and Periscope and WordPress. You name it. I'm on all of those. Um, the backs of my business cards are actually a long list of all the social media that I'm on. And I want people to find me on there because I'm always sharing. And... You know, when I invite people to come to my Rotary Club with me, I've never had someone say, what is Rotary? I've never heard of it because they've seen me share it. And I've really never even had people say, I don't want to be a part of that. That's not something I want to be involved in. The one thing I would get most often is, oh, I, I can't be there every Tuesday morning for breakfast at 7 a.m. I drop my kids off at school or I work swing shifts or I have to, I, I'm a single parent or whatever the case may be. So what I found was that it was just an inconvenience, um, and that's uh, something that I think you guys have to your advantage is is offering something that's very unique. And everywhere I go, I tell Rotarians the same thing: there are no Rotary police. <laughs> you can do whatever it takes to make your club successful, and I think that's what's so exciting about Rotary today is that what's successful and working for your club may not work for mine. It's a lot like a menu. 
Like, you might really like Brussels sprouts, but I don't. <laughs> and so uh, an online meeting might really work for you guys. Uh, Breakfast club might really work for, for some people. Um, so I started something in my district that we had not done before. I don't know if you guys have heard of it yet. It's called a satellite club. And basically, my club has two meetings a week. We have a satellite office, if you will. We meet on Monday nights for the happiest hour in Rotary. Uh, no meal is involved. It's just a cocktail hour with a program. Sometimes we don't have a program. Sometimes it's just service or social or fellowship or networking. Um, but now my club members can come either on Monday nights or Tuesday mornings, which is really convenient for them. If they need to get a makeup in, they can come to one or the other. But we've attracted a whole new crowd of people, not just younger people, which I think I was very surprised by because I really thought that it was going to be all younger people coming after work or um, you know, that wanted to be a part of a happy hour group, but that wasn't necessarily the case. But a satellite club is basically just a second option for your club throughout the week, and that's been something that's really worked for my club, um, and it's really helped us grow. The, a year ago, my club had 25 members. We finished 2014 and 15 plus 10. That's a lot of new members in one year. Now, I sponsored seven of those, but everybody else is starting to figure out how it works, and they're starting to invite guests as well. And this year, we are, uh, we've, we've brought in, I think, eight new members so far. Um, and one of the things I talk about, which I think is really important for people like, like you guys, is not so much attendance. I know you, we take attendance, but what's more important than attendance is engagement. And I think that doing service projects or fellowships or your, your, your third week meeting that you guys have, those are really, really important because I think people come for one reason, but they sometimes stay for another. And if people come for fellowship or networking or service, um, they might stay because of one of the other reasons. And uh, I know most of you are new to Rotary, and I was too at one time. Um, but I had a rotary moment, and I always believe that everybody will have a rotary moment. If you haven't yet, you will. Um, but the first club that I was a member of was because someone invited me, and I went to lunch every Thursday to that club meeting when I still lived in Spartanburg, and I got I, I went every week. I was loyal, but and I was in Rotary, but Rotary was never in me. And so when I moved to Hendersonville um, almost 13 years ago now, I had it on my resume that I was a member of Rotary. So when I was interviewing for a job year, my, my future boss said to me, oh, you're in Rotary. I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> of course, yes. And, and he said, oh, great. When you move here, you'll join the Hendersonville Club. Okay. So for me, the second club I joined was because my boss told me to. <laughs> and I have found there a lot of those kinds of Rotarians in the world as well. But the third club, and I promise that's my last one, is the club I'm in now. And I, I joined it because I wanted to. And I, it's just across town, and it's really right down the street from the last club I was in. But this club is all about service, and it's it understands flexibility and creativity and relevance, which I think is really important in order for Rotary to grow. We've been at 1.2 million members around the world for a very long time. And in order to get to 1.3 million, we have to be relevant to whatever is going on in our community and in our society as well as around the world. And I think that that satellite club is really working for, for my club to be able to do that. Um, but I, the, I also had, I was in the second club, I, at the Hendersonville Club. I went every week. I chaired every fundraiser. I did public image and public relations for them. I got involved at the district level. And I was, again, I was in Rotary. But Rotary wasn't in me. And it wasn't until a uh, past district governor here uh, came to speak to my club about a, a trip to Medellin, Colombia, to deliver wheelchairs to uh, people with spina bifida that I really caught the bug. My mom was born with spina bifida, and so um, I, I knew a little bit about it, enough to probably make me dangerous, but I knew that I was interested in it, and I wanted to be a part of that trip. So I, I scraped together the money, and I went on that trip to help deliver wheelchairs. And I can tell you with, without hesitation that that trip changed my life. And being there and watching loved ones and family members put their, their loved one into a wheelchair and give them independence uh, and, and, and mobility for the very first time for many of them was huge for me. And being able to see these people for the first time ever feel like they could do something on their own. And 
and for me, that was when Rotary was in me instead of me just being in Rotary. And I always believe that everybody's going to have a Rotary moment. You, you may not have had it yet. You may think I'm crazy and that it, it's not going to happen for you, but it will. Because, you see, we're all passionate about something different. And I think that's what makes Rotary so special. Because I have a lot of energy. Me sitting still doing this presentation is really hard for me. I'm usually all over the place and uh, I have a lot of enthusiasm and energy. And when I speak to breakfast clubs, they always say to me, we shouldn't have given you coffee. And I always say, I don't drink coffee. This is just me every day, just like this. Um, and so I, I don't, you don't get that probably through the computer. But for me, I believe that we're all passionate about something different, and that's what makes us unique. So when people say to me, yeah, but if we just had 10 Tiffany's in our club, you know, membership wouldn't be a problem. Or if we had five Tiffany's, uh, public image and social media wouldn't be an issue. If we had two of you, listen, you don't want two of me. You certainly don't want 10 of me. I would drive you insane. <laughs> you just need one. Tiffany, you need one Eve, you need one Ed, you need one Anat, you need one Kevin, you need one person who's passionate about something. I don't know if you guys know someone named Ann Matthews, but she lives in Columbia, South Carolina, and she is passionate about clean water. She's an amazing woman. She was the first female to be um, the vice president of Rotary International. She was on the cover of the Rotarian magazine just about a year and a half ago. She's an amazing woman. And she's passionate about clean water, and I'm so grateful for that. And there are people like Nancy Barbie and John Nanny who are passionate about eradicating polio. And that, I'm so grateful for that because they're the ones that keep that, that moving forward. And in my club, there's someone named Henry Hoffmeyer who is passionate about the Rotary Foundation. And because of him, my club is an all Paul Harris Fellows club. We're all sustaining members club. We're E-Ray club. Um, uh, we have several benefactors and, and major gifts and major donors, all because Henry is passionate about the Rotary Foundation. And I'm grateful for that. And in a lot of clubs, you may have someone who's passionate about putting a dictionary in the hand of every third grader or someone who's passionate about a Rotaract or an Interact or a Youth Exchange or the Peace Fellows Program or someone who's passionate about social media or membership and that's what it takes. It takes all of us having those different passions and interests in order to make a successful club. So my advice to you, if you get nothing else out of this, is to find your passion and make it your purpose because I believe that's what makes you successful as a person, that's what makes a Rotary Club successful, is all of us having different passions and different different interests, all for one purpose of making the world a better place. And as hokey as that sounds, it really is true. Um, I, I, I really believe that we have to work together and all have those different passions in order for it to be successful. And one of the ways we do that is finding people who are like ourselves and finding people who are not like ourselves. And I hope that it will encourage you to think about those people that you know that maybe have the same busy schedules that you do or that want uh, to meet new people or that are passionate about youth or, or service clubs or passionate about international projects or water or whatever the case may be. Those are the people that you need to invite to be a part of your Rotary Club. Uh, because they will bring something to the table that no one else has, and that's really important to make a successful club. And um, we've had a lot of fun growing the satellite club, and, and now two and three, four other clubs in my district are doing it as well. And um, I get the chance to share that message everywhere I go, and uh, that's always a lot of fun because I get to see the ways that other people do it. And they may not do it the same way I did it, or they may find a better way, they may find a different way, different is, is good too. Um, and that's really important because it's what makes us successful. And I don't know about you, but I'm grateful for those people who have different interests and different passions than I do because for me, that's, that's a compliment to me and to my club. And I think that that's really important. So I believe that you make that list of the top 10 people that you know who deserve to be Rotarians. And those are the people that you invite and that you get involved. Invite them to a social, invite them online to hear about, um, you know, a not a project that he's working on or his research or um, about your, your last service project or your next service project or about polio or, or whatever the case may be. Let them hear you know, why you're raising money and, and what you're giving back to your community and to the world because I think that 
that's what's going to attract people to to our Rotary clubs and and that's the only way we're ever going to grow. I love e-clubs and I'm so excited to be a, a part of this meeting tonight because I haven't done it before um, but I would love to start one in my district so I'm going to use you guys as my uh, my measuring stick and as my my baseline to, to see how this works and uh, my district governor right now her daughter who lives in Virginia has joined an e-club and uh, so we're trying to find out how her club is working, but I think her her members are all over the place and not just in in, in one geographical area. So I think socials and fellowships are going to be a little challenging for them. But I think I applaud you for doing this because I I think that it it shows that you have a heart for service. If you're willing to sit at home in your PJs or on your couch late at night, and for me this is late, my Rotary Club met at 7 a.m. this morning. So <laughs> I have been gone since about 6.30 this morning. And I had my meeting last night too. Uh, so I, I don't have to worry about attendance. I, I got plenty of makeups um, throughout the year. But um, I think that that speaks volumes about your passion and your commitment to Rotary and, and what you're willing to do. And um, I, I have to tell you that I hope that, I don't know if you can see it, but this is the pen that I'm wearing today. This is my rotary pen today. I have lots of rotary pens. Usually they're covered in rhinestones and bling and or sequins or something. I always tell people that sequins are my Prozac and that's kind of how I, I, I survive. But um, this one happens to be a bunch of women in a, in a globe and it's uh, women in rotary. But um, I wear my rotary pen every day and, and I encourage you to do it too. And I tell people I'm not just a Rotarian on Tuesdays. I'm a Rotarian every single day. And I spoke to a rotary club in Alaska back in September and a huge club. and um, if you visited some clubs, you may know that they do happy dollars or they'll pass around a hat or a basket or something and collect money when people tell funny stories or something like that. And and um, that club, uh, they actually fine you if you're not wearing your rotary pin. Some clubs still do that. And uh, I was impressed, though, because the president said, raise your hand if you're wearing your rotary pin today. And literally like 75 percent of the room their hands went up and everybody was very proud of themselves and there were only a few people that had to pay fines so when I got up to speak I said hey do me a favor again raise your hand if you're wearing your rotary pin today everybody was so proud they had their arms up and I said now keep your hands up if you wear it every day <laughs> and all of a sudden the hands started coming down and I said are you just a Rotarian on Tuesdays you know, wear your pen every day and be proud of it. You never know who's going to see it, who's going to ask you a question, um, especially when it's covered in rhinestones. People tend to notice it. Um, but I own a clothing store. It's one of the things I do for a living, and uh, I, which is where I'm sitting right now. And um, I, I was in my store one day working, and a lady was shopping. Her husband was sitting over by the door waiting patiently while she was shopping. And uh, when she got ready to check out, he came up to the counter with the credit card and he saw my rotary pin and he said oh you're in rotary and you know me yes I am <laughs> he said oh so you have lunch with all those old men every Tuesday <laughs> I said well first of all I'm in the breakfast club <laughs> but second of all it's not your grandpa's rotary club anymore and I really believe that and I don't think that's a bad thing I think that it speaks volumes about the fact that we can have Rotary meetings online and that we can have a happy hour club where it doesn't even include a meal and it doesn't cost people as much to be a member of this organization or that we can meet twice a month uh, with a program and once a month with a social and once a month with a service project, whatever it takes to be successful. And I think that the more we we promote that and the more we put it out on our social media and our websites and things, then um, the better off all of us are going to be because just imagine, and I know we're getting close to time, so if we are this, get my hand in the right place, if we are this close to eradicating polio with 1.2 million people, just imagine how much closer we would be if we actually had 1.3 million or more. Because I believe that that's the only way we're going to eradicate polio. It's the only way we're going to make a difference um, in the lives of more and more people. It's about being a gift to the world. It's not about numbers. It's really not. It's about being a bigger gift. And the only way we can do that is with more people, not just in numbers, but people who have a heart for service. And I, I really do believe that. Um, I just want to share with you guys before before I wrap up, and then I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have too. Um, but one of the things I do for a living is I'm a professional spokesperson, so I do commercials for car dealerships and furniture stores and 
jewelry companies or whatever. Uh, and I also am a keynote speaker. This is what I do. But I waive all of my fees when I travel and speak to Rotary Clubs. I waive my professional speaking fees. But if you ever know anybody that needs a keynote speaker for a leadership conference or um, for a, a special event or a fundraiser or uh, maybe even for their business, um, just I do have to pay my mortgage. So I just ask that you keep me in mind. That's really all I ever ask is that if you ever know of someone who needs a speaker or if you need a speaker, um, you can find me online at tiffanyirvin.com and send people to me and I would greatly appreciate it. But other than that, I'm here because I really believe in the power of social media and the power of, of growing our organization the right way. So, but I'm happy to answer any questions if anybody has any. You guys have been quiet. That was great. Any questions for Tiffany? Tiffany, this is Jeanne. I just wanted to say thank you for talking about CART. On um, on Friday night, we were actually discussing that because you know we don't have a we don't have that blue bucket to pass around during the meeting. Mm -hmm. But um, we did. Those of us who were at the social, we did throw some some coin and coins and dollars in the in a little uh, taco. Tortilla bucket, <laughs> which our treasure Ed took home for the night to uh, deposit and, um, and to, to submit. So um, yeah, I did want to mention you could think about doing. Um, I have seen a couple of clubs and districts even do. Um, it's basically like a. Um, a stadium cup, if you will, that'll fit down in your car, um, in your cup holder in your car, um, or you could put it on your nightstand and just every night throw your spare change in there, and then you could collect it, you know, whenever you guys do get together. But um, I think cart may not have them, but you could get someone, you could easily have them made. Or um, actually, the guy who is the executive director of cart isn't here in my district, so um, when I see him in a couple of weeks. He may be at Pets, actually, uh, Jean, so I'll be there, too, and we can talk to him. But that might be something, because they do provide those buckets, I might mention to him that they might think about doing cups as well um, that they could give to members of e-clubs, because it would be the same cost or, or less, maybe. I'm going to write that down so I don't forget. Okay. <laughs> did you say you're going to be in Pets? Well, did someone ask if I'm going to be at Pets? Yes, I, think that was I thought he just mentioned that you're going to be in PET. I am. I'm an assistant governor this coming year in my district, and so I will well, be in, in a couple of weeks. I look, forward, I look forward to seeing you in Greensboro if that's where you're going. I am. I will be in Greensboro. That's just a couple of weeks from now. I will just gotten back from vacation, so I will be very tanned <laughs> and relaxed. <laughs> well, I look for a tanned young lady. <laughs> very good, yes. Please make sure you find me and say hello. Well, I belong to the club that you mentioned in passing today, and that is the Downtown Durham Club, and we are about 200-plus members, and we do have the Alzheimer's cart bucket, and it is a plastic bowl about uh, five or six inches in diameter, about six inches tall, and uh, yes, we do rattle the chain, but uh, many people now put in a dollar bill because it's easier to carry than change, so we do rack up. Uh, three, four thousand uh, dollars towards Alzheimer's, and uh, we are doing um, a major project in training uh, Alzheimer uh, uh, treatment specialists who are coming here from Brazil, I believe. Oh wow! And we are working, I think, with the, with the, with a club in your area. They oh. are actually being and being physicians from Brazil. And they're coming to Duke, so Duke Medicine is helping with that. So I thought maybe you'd know that. Um, I don't know of which club it would be in my district, but that's great news. Great, wonderful, and uh, I am thrilled to meet and at least listen to someone who is quite so involved and charged with the message of Rotary. So, how did you join Rotary, and and how long ago? I think total I've been a member now probably 14 years um, because I've been in Hendersonville 13 and I was in um, a smaller club in Spartanburg before I moved here. Um, and I was being introduced at a club last week and uh, I, I don't know where he found this information but the, the president who was introducing me when I was speaking said, he said, I learned the most interesting thing about you last week in the DACDB. He said, I learned that you have perfect attendance in Rotary. And I thought, I had no idea you could find that in DACDB. You never know what's going to pop up in there. But it's easy for me because I, I go to so many meetings. I probably have had perfect attendance for a very long time. But um, I, I this is my third club that I'm in now. Um, total of, like I said, probably about 14 years. 
and uh, I'm a past president of my club um, and I've chaired my district conference twice um, in 11 and 15 and I have been the district public information chair this year I'm the district membership chair and uh, next year will be an assistant governor so uh, I've I've been really involved in social media and membership lately, but fundraising card. I, when I went to Brazil last summer, um, I, I was there to speak about membership, um, and the CART Fund asked me actually to participate in their panel discussion with the RAG for um, um, the Dementia uh, Rotary Action Group. And so I spoke on behalf of CART while I was in Brazil last summer. So that was really exciting too. Well, it's a privilege meeting you on the phone, and it will be a pleasure meeting you in person. Thank you. I look, I forward, look forward to it. And I, when does the Durham Club meet? Uh, Mondays at noon at the downtown Maria. Oh, great. Wonderful. Well, anytime you need a um, speaker, just tell them to let me know. <laughs> yes, indeed. I mean, that's a pleasure knowing you, and uh, Thank you. I'm sure that when we meet in the uh, next couple of weeks, uh, I look forward to uh, getting to know you more. That'd be great. Thank you. Much obliged to you. Thank you. Thank you. Tiffany, thank you so much for a wonderful, um, encouraging, inspiring message um, for your, your service in Rotary and for helping to guide us as we continue to um, put everything together to grow and to get us to that 1.3 million members. We want to yep. do our part, for sure. I don't know if um, Shanika is available to unmute her microphone or if she's able to um, be with us. I see it, and I'm wondering if Shanika might be willing to lead us in the four-way test to close out our meeting tonight. Yes. Okay, the four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. First, is it the truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Third, will it build good will and better friendships. Fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? That's Rotary for tonight. Thank you, Shanika, for all your work on the membership committee and um, appreciate everyone for all your service in Rotary and to the world. So if you, anyone wants to stay on for a couple of minutes, I will keep the meeting open. But Tiffany, thank you again and we look forward to developing and continuing the relationship with you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Tiffany. Tiffany. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Tiffany. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Kevin, I wanted to...